Hi everyone and welcome back to a little bit of PoE. We are making a little bit of a build showcase and talking about the concepts behind this build, right? For those of you who don't know, uh, I have spent a couple of weeks now playing around with freezing poles. Um, always in a self-cast setting, right? It's just a playstyle that I like. I love freezing poles as a skill. And coupled with Herald of Ice, uh, it gets those nice explosions going and it just feels good to play. It's a lot of fun and that's what I'm looking for the most, actually, right? So now it's not only fun, but it's also actually <laughs> quite viable for just T16 farming and take down a couple of bosses like Cyrus, the Shaper and the Elder. Those were done multiple times now with this character and since I have upgraded it a little bit, um, <laughs> this will be even better and feel better to do. But yeah, so the main concept behind this build is to have a self-casting elementalist that shatters enemy and gets the Herald of Ice explosions and as a platform for that we are using freezing poles. Um, we did lose the first snow jewel, which was a bit of a concern, um, but I was using pinpoint support for the most time played with freezing poles now. Um, so yeah, I mean, you gain three additional projectiles on the, your first cast, and once you gain your intensity stacks, you lose projectiles. Um, and you end up back on one, but that one deals more damage, right? So it's a very nice concept to be seeing with freezing pulls. I mean, while clearing, you want as many projectiles as possible, but when you fight the boss, you want just one with the most damage you can put out. So that's why Pinpoint works just oh so well. We are using Spell Echo, a staple in my self-casting builds. Honestly, I use this over Unleash a lot of the time. Uh, Unleash has its own things going for it, but in conjunction with Pinpoint, I just like Spell Echo more. Uh, and the next concept is how do we scale damage, right? So I went for crit and just penetration of elemental resistances, as well as lowering elemental resistances of enemies, uh, which is done via Frost Bomb with Spell Cascade covers a nice amount of ground while mapping if you just want to apply exposure to a whole group of enemies, right? Uh, and also it generates us power charges consistently in boss fights as well as while mapping if you, if we want to. Um, and you're using Sniper's Mark, uh, manual casting this, excuse me, this curse on enemies so they will take increased damage from projectiles and also uh, projectiles are actually splitting up, um, which is very nice when you have a fight like uh, the fight against Rox, where you have minions coming in during his invulnerability phase, right? You can actually just focus fire on the rocks and all the minions will get hit at some point as well. To round everything off, uh, we have Frost Shield, which would give us higher crit chance. I have disabled this at the moment in the calculations, but it gives you a little bit of survivability. It gives you a little bit of increased crit strike, or uh, base crit actually, which is very, very nice, especially early on when you are relying on a diamond flask as well. But yeah, also in here is Vol Cold Snap. This is to generate frenzy charges during boss fights mainly to focus down the last bit of the boss's health before we are proccing Culling Strike, right? Um, so that's another thing that I wanted to have in this build. I really like having Culling Strike. We do this with our Anoint. We are going for Marked for Death, which as you can see provides Culling Strike against a marked enemy. So yeah, we have to cast our Whoops. <laughs> cast our curse manually on the boss once, uh, or mostly just once, depending on the boss you're fighting, right? Uh, and this will provide you with calling strike. You don't have to use freezing pulse or frost bomb. You can actually flame dash into the boss to proc the calling strike. And that's really, really nice. Brings us to our flame dash as movement skill. It's the only movement skill we have. We don't have a lot of movement speed as well as a witch, right? So fair warning, it's not the fastest mapper. It's not the best boss killer, 
But as I said, I just wanted to have fun. And 2 million DPS, and that's actually quite lowballing it. Um, but 2 million sustained DPS for a self cast build with Freezing Pulse is in my eyes fair enough. And yeah, uh, to bolster up our defenses though, we invested into Determination and Defiance Banner coupled with just armor bases where we can get it. Uh, on the gloves, I went for a hybrid between armor and ES, just to make a triple green, uh, triple blue, one green happening early on. It's just so much easier, right? Just for coloring reasons. On the boots, I went with an armor base. Uh, this one wasn't too difficult to get to color correctly. Um, yeah, the other concept is using golems. Um, with our ascendancy and a little bit of a cluster down here to give us more max golems. So we are now on a maximum of four, which means we can have four of our friends running around. Ice golem for crit, lightning golem for cast speed, stone golem for life regen, and chaos golem for a little bit of physical damage mitigation. That's pretty much almost everything behind this build, right? Um, stacking armor is very good against smaller hits while mapping, um, just the physical damage that flows in, right? You mitigate a good amount of that. And for the elemental mitigation we have, just about only our resistances. There is an argument to, can, to be made that you could go Bastion of Elements to gain a little bit more of um, LE resistances, right? You have a shield that takes a good amount of damage before it goes to your resistances and life pool, uh, and also the reflect immunity is very very nice to have but it's also like a huge damage loss like almost half a million of our damage uh, comes from our heart of destruction ascendancy so if you just want this to map um you could definitely go the route of bastion of elements um, at the moment i'm doing bosses and as you can see our uh, convergence is actually yeah that's almost half a million dps um that we would lose, right? It would be nice, but also uh, I just want the damage at the moment. Uh, Dying Sun is here to actually gain more projectiles, right? Uh, this is very amazing. I don't care about the fire rest on there. Uh, just the two additional projectiles is very good, uh, which it's, it just means your clear will feel so much better, right? <laughs> also, the gearing of this character was pretty cool to do. Uh, I crafted a lot of stuff myself and I always enjoy that very much, right? So yeah, I mean if you take a look at the calculation you can see clearly we are caring the most about elemental and cold damage. Uh, this is pretty much split half in between both of those concepts, which is nice. Like on the tree you have more elemental damage than cold damage for the most part, right? So to get the most out of both of them. Uh, we combine those on the tree. The 30% more damage is our buff from conversions. As I said, that is why this is such a big deal, right? And honestly, like having almost 100% crit chance feels really good uh, with a good amount of crit multi to really pack a punch there, right? And as you can see, um, our chance to freeze goes up very high because our crits are just insane, right? So for other enemies, you pretty much freeze everything. And if you don't freeze them, you at least chill them and reduce their action speed. That gives you more breathing room in boss fights and stuff. So I just like chill and freezes um, as much as everyone <laughs> who has ever dealt with that, right? Uh, we then try and scale a little bit of cast speed. Uh, spell Echo is the more multiplier here that you get, but the increased cast speed a bit on the tree. Um, I would probably get more of cast speed on my gear once I go for like, or if I actually go for best in slot items, I would value more cast speed even more. For now, this is pretty nice. Uh, we have 4.52 costs per second. That's really, really good, right? Cost time 0 0.22 seconds. That's nice. Um, but yeah, um, that's offensively what we do and defensively touched on a little bit. But one thing that I really wanted to incorporate is actually how to recover life, right? Um, so we do this with 
regen through the stone golem as well as while we are moving we are actually regening a little bit more because we did take the mastery so if you check this uh, we gain almost uh, more than 100 life regenerated per second while on the move which is very nice right other than that we have life leech um that's pretty nice so <laughs> yeah that is like a good amount that you can leech from enemies and as i said through crafting uh, the new influences are really cool on the gloves we get unnerf and life leech and on the boots we get increased action speed which is not calculated in here at the moment but that's okay uh, as well as cooldown recovery for travel skills as i said we have a quicksilver flask and flame dash those are our mobility options we don't have the luxury of having very high move speed and stuff so yeah keep that in mind but yeah, uh, other than that, we have some build enabling uniques. The Katarina helmet paired with the Ashes of the Stars amulet. Very important, you need to have 11% reservation efficiency on your Ashes of the Stars or the build will not work with the tree here. Uh, just as a side note, a very important one, right? But yeah, make sure you have 11% at least. It is a low roll. It goes from 10% upwards. So getting 11% is not the expensive part. 30% quality can be the one that pushes the price up. You don't need 30% quality. I just have it because I wanted the cooldown recovery for Flame Dash, um, which is what affects this. If you take a look at the skill Flame Dash here, 45% um, increased cooldown recovery rate that we get from those quality. So 20 quality. On the gem and 30 from the amulet gives us 45% increased cooldown recovery. And that's just, it feels very good, right? Right, so a couple of things that I have added or changed up. Um, reservation mastery, we don't need this anymore with the new amulet. We instead go for herald buff effect, um, which is nice. That's a good DPS boost and it allows us to get the... Uh, reservation mastery that we were using before anyways through this cluster here so that was a win-win situation basically we were um cutting out one skill point from this one so that feels really really nice uh now i'm level 95 with this one so i might go to level 96 just to grab vampirism because we get a little bit of life gained on kill and damage taken recouped as life here that just also helps with sustain right it and we have life on kill here right yeah we also have life on kill here so that just feels really really nice while mapping and the last thing that we do to recover our life has to do with the katarina helmet again uh trigger level 15 feast of flesh every five seconds so what this does is it consumes corpses around you to give you life energy shield and mana back uh, it's like 400 life and energy shield per corpse and 200 mana per corpse. Now, we are using Herald of Ice, so how do we get corpses, right? Well, that's when our cost and damage taken setup comes into play. Yes, we use it to get Molten Shell to gain more armor, but we also use this to uh, cast Desecrate for us, which spawns, spawns five corpses around us, which equals to 2,000 life and yes, and 1,000 mana. Well, we don't care about the mana, right? But 2,000 life in the ES just in an instant feels really good. When you take a big hit, you get Molten Shell and you heal up for 2,000 life on top of your regen and your life leech. Uh, that feels really, really good. Will you still get one shot from time to time? Yup, especially if you do play as recklessly as I do at the moment. Um, but as I said, if I really want to go the extra mile to get this last level up here to 96 to get vampirism, um, I would play more careful and not just run in and jump around and do stupid things, right? So yeah, this build can be something for you if you do enjoy self-casting, if you do enjoy freezing pulse, if you like Herald of Ice explosions, uh, I think you will have a lot of fun with this build. Is it something that you can leak start with? Yes, uh, there have to be a couple of changes in the skill tree, uh, especially if you do not have these two uniques on the ready, right? Um, but I think with the investment I have into the build right now, um, 
2 million DPS is very, very solid. And to touch upon that, just for the last thing today, why do I calculate the damage like I do, right? Uh, I haven't Frost Shield activated. If we actually cast this one with one stage, we are already crit capped, right? But that doesn't matter too, too much for me right now. Um, yeah, it's just a nice little bonus that you can get, but you don't actually need it too, too often. It's just there to give me a safety bubble when I want to cast a little bit. Intensify, we are on two intensity stacks, right? While mapping, you will start without any, obviously, but the more you focus fire, you go up and you can see how this affects your damage. Why do I not post with three intensity stacks, but two? The reason is easy, you lose intensity while you are moving or flame dashing, right? So I found that two intensity is a very good middle ground um, to calculate the damage because that's what I often see myself getting against bosses uh, in longer fights especially, right? I do calculate with the Cyrus here uh, as the boss. You could go Shaper Guardian, it doesn't affect your damage. Uh, against standard bosses, you you have three stacks, guys. You just have them. You just burst them down. You you pretty much chain freeze them for a long time. But against Cyrus or the Elder or the Shaper, two is more reasonable. Power charges, on the other hand, those are fairly easy to get consistently with our Frost Bomb uh, setup that has power charge on crit, right? So very consistent, very easy to get and to keep up. Frenzy charges. Yeah, we have all cold snap and we can get a little burst of like 300k extra damage, but it's not consistently up, so I do not take this. Um, Convergence, on the other hand, is up very consistently, and as I said, this is a huge damage buff to us. And on nerf, this one is not as huge, but still a big amount, like... Unearthed enemies take 10% increased spell damage. That's basically a 10% more multiplier for you, right? So this is a huge deal. And I have the lowest tier modifiers on the implicits right now. I only have a 15% chance to unnerf on hit, right? But honestly, this is up quite consistent. So I think this is a fair assumption to make. So yeah, we are looking at 2 million sustained DPS uh, with Culling Strike that goes to combined DPS of 2.3 million, uh, which I found pretty nice. The Wrath Aura, that is something that the Lightning Golem can give you. That doesn't affect you too much, um, as you see there. Um, other than that, what would be good? Uh, right, Tailwind. Now, you can't get to 8% with the implicit of action speed, if I am remembering that correctly, but you, I think you can get to 7%. So, yeah, that would be a huge boost as well, right? So, even with 4%, if you get half of the boost here, that's still almost 100k damage that we gain that is not calculated in here. And also, the Watcher's Eye I'm using at the moment has Arcane Search for 4 seconds when you create Consecrated Ground, which we are doing with our Salutary Aura, right? Um, so that's not calculated as well. So the damage is actually higher. But as I said, I wanted to give you a baseline of sustainable DPS. And that's why things are checked where I think they make sense. And this is set to two to give a good amount of middle ground overview, I guess. But yeah, I'm looking forward to improving this build even more. Um, basically, everything you see is what I'm using at the moment, the tree the items, uh, the skill gems in their current setup, um, a level 21 freezing pulse that I got. Um, and yeah, with the modifiers we have, this goes up to 24, right? Which is very, very nice. And you can see if you get this even higher, your damage will actually go up quite considerably. So we might look into a plus one cold spell and, co and plus one all. Uh, skill gem, wand and shield at some point, but other than that we are just enjoying it as it is right now. One important thing to mention as well for the ailment stuff is that we are actually shock, freeze, chill and ignite immune thanks to the investment on the tree over here as well as making sure we do craft stuff on our gear that gives us 25% chance to avoid any ailments, right? So you need that on 
uh, your boots, you need it on your body armor, and you need it on your shield as well to gain 100%. But that, it just, it makes mapping very smooth, and it makes boss fights that have, uh, let's take the, the Guardians, for example. Um, some of them have nasty ignites, right? Um, and just to be able to ignore that and not be ignited feels so, so good. The last concept I want to talk about, uh, the flask setup, it's pretty easy to explain. As I said, we need one quick at least one Quicksilver flask, right? Uh, to keep this up as much as possible. Uh, we need to roll a better one at some point for sure. We take a granite and a basalt flask just to beef up our armor even more. Uh, if you take those, you can see uh, you're almost at 23k armor. Uh, so that feels really, really good. The Dying Sun we talked about. Uh, and as a life flask, I'm using this one here, a Frightened Eternal Life Flask uh, with Bleed Immunity. Really good. And Instant Recovery when on low life actually is a lifesaver. We almost get 2k out of this on top of our le Leech and Regen as well as the Katarina helmet doing its thing, right? So, yeah, sustainabil sustainability sorry, has been improved. Uh, it might not be at its best right now. We might have to work out a couple of things. As I said, you could go Bastion of Elements and stuff, or you could go with a Cluster Jewel to get more Leech. I will look into those things as well, but I don't want to make this video any longer than it is right now. The Path of Building link is provided down in the description if you want to go for this build. And if the demand is there, I might sit down and level up a new witch in like Solo Self Found just to iron out leveling trees. Currently, there are no leveling trees in here, right? So, yeah. If you guys want that, let me know. Um, then I might sit down and do a proper build guide with leveling trees and everything. But only if the demand is there, right? Um, yeah, hope you have enjoyed this overview and the concepts behind this build. Thank you guys so much for watching. And as always, take care. Bye.